much for the wonderful change that has taken place in our lives. And Lord, it was not by might nor was it by power, but only by your spirit, saith the Lord. Lord, we thank you for the awesome privilege of being able to worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord, we pray right now that you would arrest our attention that we might hear your voice. Spirit of the living God, continue to fall on us. Break us and mold us and shape us. Lord, give us ears to hear and hearts to obey. In Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Amen. Well, good morning. It's exciting to be here this morning, and I just want to welcome all of our guests, our first-time guests. If you will stand with me as we read a portion of the Word of God. Acts chapter 28, if you'll turn there with me. Acts chapter 28, and we will be reading the latter part of Acts chapter 28. In fact, I want to read starting at verse 23. And it reads, when they had set a day for Paul, they came to him at his lodging in large numbers, and he was explaining to them by solemnly testifying about the kingdom of God and trying to persuade them concerning Jesus from both the law of Moses and from the prophets from morning until evening. Some were being persuaded by the things spoken of, but others would not believe. And when they did not agree with one another, they began leaving Paul after had, had spoken uh, they began leaving after Paul had spoken one parting word. The Holy Spirit rightly spoke through Isaiah the prophet to your father, saying, Go to this people and say, You will keep on hearing, but will not understand. And you will keep on seeing, but will not perceive. For the heart of the people has become dull, and with their ears they scarcely hear, and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise they might see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and return, and I would heal them. Therefore, let it be known to you that this salvation of God has been sent to the Gentiles. They will also listen. When he had spoken these words, the Jews departed, having a great dispute, dispute among themselves. And he stayed two full years in his own rented quarters, and was welcoming all who came to him, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching concerning the Lord Jesus Christ with all openness, unhindered. And the word of the Lord was read, and let us all say, Amen. You may be seated. Well, you might note that our, uh, the title of the sermon this morning is Rome, Sweet Rome. And play on home sweet home and Paul has been making his way uh, to Rome and so we are coming to the end in fact this morning will be the end of this series I bet some of you all never thought we would get through <laughs> I don't know if you're clapping because we are at the end of Acts and you were excited about what Acts is, is doing in your life or you just want to move on to something else. Either way, we have made it to the end of this great book. Uh, you all might note that uh, in your bulletins were a chart. Um, this chart basically highlights the book of uh, Acts 
from beginning to end. You'll note that on the, uh, the first row, you will see verses 1, verse 1 through 6, verse 7. That was the witness to Jerusalem. Verses 6, I mean, chapter 6, verse 8 through chapter 9, verse 31 was the witness through uh, Judea and Samaria. And then after verse, uh, chapter 9, verse 32, all the way through the end, this was a witness to the world. And then, of course, in this ministry began with Peter in chapter 1, verse 1, all the way up through chapter 8, verse 40. And then Paul comes along in chapter 9, and his conversion, all the way up through 28, and the ministry of Paul goes through the rest, reaching the, the gospel, preaching the gospel to the Gentile world. And so we have come to this latter part in Acts chapter 28, verses 11 through 31. You remember, Paul was, this is uh, the last uh, uh, trial for Paul. And he went before Felix, and, and then he went before uh, Festus, and, and um, Felix responds, and they keep sending him from court to court to court. Last week we saw that uh, Paul appealed to go to um, Caesar in Rome, and there this, this morning we will see his trial there in Rome. Father, we thank you again for your grace. We thank you for, Lord, how you have highlighted your word, the church, the ecclesia the called out ones, how uh, you have used them to advance the gospel of Jesus Christ. We thank you that you have called us out of the world to advance the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so as we listen to this word, will you prepare our hearts to respond? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, in verse 11, of course, we saw that Paul uh, uh, arrived at uh, Malta, which is the name Refuge. Paul received a refuge there. And um, if you remember on last week, Paul was, uh, when he was received, there was 276 of them that made it to shore. All of them made it to shore. And when they got there, it was cold, and the natives there uh, received Paul and the 276 of them, and they had a big bonfire, and they basically, while Paul was helping them gather sticks for the bonfire, a viper uh, bit Paul, and he shook off the, the viper into the fire. And by the way, uh, God is, uh, is going to ultimately shake off Satan the viper and throw him into the eternal fire. Amen. And so Paul, uh, so the natives are now looking at Paul thinking that he's a murderer. He, he made it out of the storm, but obviously because this viper bit him and he should be swelling up right about now and nothing happened, they, <laughs> they propose that no, he, he's not a murderer, he is a god. So they began to somewhat worship uh, Paul. But at the end of the day, uh, Paul is going in the direction that God wants him to go. Listen, when God says something, as we said earlier today, you need to just say amen. amen. So let it be. When God says something is going to happen, it is going to happen. No matter what it looks like to you, amen, you need to learn how to say amen. Because if God takes you to the storm, he will take you through the storm, amen. Anybody been brought through any storms? Anybody still in the storm? Why you listen? Why you in the storm? You need to keep saying amen, knowing that God is going to take you out of the storm and through the storm. And by the way, there are some things that you get in the storm that you don't get in times of peace and, and rest. How many want to be like Paul? How many want to have faith like Paul? Yeah, but you got to understand, Paul. Paul went through some storms. Amen. Paul was beaten. Some of y'all who know Paul said, no, nah, that ain't my testimony. I don't want Paul's testimony. But ultimately, whatever our fate, God is tired.
taught us to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. Amen. Look at verse 11 here in Acts chapter 28. It says, at the end of three months, we set sail on an Alexandrian ship. And this was basically a grain ship. Now they did, um, and it says, which had wintered uh, at, the, at the island, which had the twin brothers for its figurehead. So now they get on this ship, this Alexandrian ship, this grain ship, and they, they, they identify this ship as one that it says, it says, which had the twin brothers as its figurehead. Now, of course, these figureheads are Castor and Pollux, who are the sons of Zeus. Now, of course, these people were very mythical, and so they had this idea that uh, Castor and Pollux, who were the sons of Zeus, was the protector of them over the sea. So this is why they had them as a figurehead on this Adriatic sea, uh, ship. And it says, these twin brothers for its figurehead, verse 12, after we put in at Syracuse, we stayed there for three days. And tradition says that while they were there in, in Syracuse, uh, they planted a church. And Syracuse is basically uh, on the island of Sicily. It's the important island. And um, again, tradition holds that there was a church planted in three days. Paul, wherever he was, he was about advancing the kingdom of God. He didn't need to do, uh, he didn't need to spend a whole long time there. But when he spent time wherever he was, he was about advancing the kingdom of God. Amen. And by the way, uh, the book of Acts stands as a model for us. Acts chapter 28 is not the last chapter of Acts. I hope you understand that. It's quiet. Do you all realize that we are living in chapter 29? We are the, the church that is still advancing the gospel of Jesus Christ. So there is a 29th chapter of Acts, and that includes all of us who are looking at the example of God uh, taking common, ordinary people and, and filling them with the Spirit of God and changing the world and turning the world upside down. God is still using common, ordinary people to advance the gospel of Jesus Christ. And yes, there still will be storms. But God is going to take us to our home, sweet home. Jesus left and he says, listen, if I go away, I am going to come back and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you will be also. But in the meantime, you are to be advancing the kingdom of God. He says in verse 12, we put in at Syracuse. We stayed there for three days. From there we sailed around and arrived at Regium. Regium. And a day later, a south wind sprang up, and on the second day, we came to Portoli. There, we found some brethren, and were invited to stay with them for seven days, and thus, we came to Rome. Paul is finally there in Rome. I believe it was in chapter 19 of Acts, verse 21, somewhere around there. Verse 21, it says, now after these things, after this riot had finished, after these things were finished, Paul purposed in the spirit to go to Jerusalem after he had passed through Macedonia and Achaia, saying, after, he says, after I have been there, I must also see Rome. Starting in chapter, 20, chapter 19, verse 21, Paul set his face on going to Rome. And now he is in Rome. Is God not faithful? He had all of these different trials. The Jews tried to kill him on many different occasions, but Paul made it to his destination because Paul's heart was God's heart. If you want to be, if you want your prayers answered in the affirmative, pray God's will for your life. And so he gets there to Rome. Verse 16 says, 
When we entered Rome, Paul was allowed to stay by himself with the soldier who was guarding him. So point number one, Paul received a pleasurable reception. Um, I believe it was in Romans chapter 15, verse 22, if you flip ahead, Paul wrote a letter some three years earlier to the Romans, to the, to the Romans, and he was letting them know of his desire to come to Rome. You'll see that in Romans chapter 15. Verse 22 says this, For this reason I have often been prevented from coming to you, but now with no further place for me in, this, in these regions, and since I have had for many years a longing to come to you, whenever I go to Spain I hope to see you in passing and to be helped on my way there by you when I have first enjoyed your company for a while. At the end, you'll note that Paul is here in Rome for additional two years and he has freedom